Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Do it. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready. It's actually loaded. Man, I'm just, this is crazy. How did this get here? Nobody's gonna ever know, right? No, no one's gonna know. There's just a million things with this. We have no idea what's going on. This is a Remington New Model Army. Uh, they made them roughly from 1862 to 1875. And in fact, if it wasn't for the Colt fire that destroyed the factory, this gun probably wouldn't have been produced in as great a quantity as it was. And I'm gonna tell you something. This is the one time when you're gonna ask me what it's worth that I'm gonna tell you I don't know. Here are times when Rick came across items he had to have for himself. Gobrek Dollar and Liberty Head Double Eagle. Rick's love for valuable coins is no secret. When Jeff brings him two coins from the 1800s, he's confident that Rick cannot let them slip through his fingers. Hey Jeff, what's up? Oh, hey Rick, how you doing? I'm doing great. I was in town and uh, I have a couple coins to show you I think you might like. Okay, let me, let me see, see him. him. Yeah. Okay. Today I want to show Rick I have an 1838 Goldbrick Silver Dollar and I have an 1857 S Double Eagle from the shipwreck of the SS Central America. This is incredible. I love the pattern dollars because the engravers at the Mint were really trying to do the best they could do. And this one? So this is an 1857 San Francisco Double Eagle and this was made at the San Francisco Mint. And this ship called the SS Central America, and it sank in a hurricane, and 425 people died on this ship. So it was really one of the biggest tragedies in American maritime history. So this is one of the coins that was recovered in the 1980s. Okay, so big question, what do you want for them? I would sell that for $27,000. So it's a, it's a really great looking coin at an affordable price. You know, $27,000 is not really an affordable price to most people. <laughs> Better than 100,000. And what do you want for the shipwreck coin? Um, the shipwreck coin I would sell for 14,000. This one? I don't want. It's a great coin. It might be a great price and everything like that. My big fear is a few years from now, they'll go back down to the shipwreck again, and they'll find a couple thousand of these, right. and it takes the price down of all of them because somebody just flood the market. Now, this one, I know there's only like tw there was only like 20 of those made. When people come in with ancient coins, I call them one of my experts. But these are the kinds of coins I deal on a regular basis for years and years and years. So they're in my wheelhouse. Would you take 22 grand for it? No, I couldn't do that. It's a, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a great coin, and I'd, I'd be losing money at that. So. I mean, I mean, I, I am buying this for myself. Okay, well, so you know, because I, I collect different. these kind of coins, and I don't. Right. I mean, uh, what's your best price? Very, very best price I would do. I would sell it for twenty-five thousand. So we got a deal at twenty-four. If you're buying it for yourself, I would sell it for the twenty-four thousand. All right, sweet, we got a deal. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, Thanks. even though if it's for myself, we still got to do paperwork. So you want to go over there? I'll and, do it. Uh, okay. I'll write you up. That sounds good. Thanks, Rick. I'll bring them both with you. Okay. I just won't tell my wife about it. Rick dismisses the more expensive coin because it was obtained from a shipwreck and could stand to lose its value if more salvages flood the market. He closes in on the silver dollar and makes a $22,000 offer. Jeff counters with $25,000 as the lowest selling price. Rick wants the coin for himself so desperately that he convinces Jeff to accept $24,000. Tree Gun Rick is mind blown when Tom casually walks in and shows him something cooler than sunken treasure, an 1859 Remington New Model Army that is encased into a cottonwood tree. Hey, how's it going? Those are some fancy boots. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's a fancy piece of wood. We have a pistol grown into a tree. We have a pistol grown into a tree. Okay, I'm guessing 1858 Remington. If you're in the Civil War, this was a great thing to have. These things weren't issued to you, you had to go get one. A lot of guys had them in the Civil War because if you carried one of these with you, there's a lot better chance you'd live. Is it loaded? Supposedly, there is a bullet in the chamber. I honestly don't know. Let me, hold on one second here. Let me find a piece of bob wire. That one's empty, that one's empty. Can I take it out of this? You know, I've never taken it out. Ooh, that's neat how it grew right into the barrel. And yeah, that's loaded. The one in the chamber, you're never gonna be able to figure out. A hell of a quandary. Um, what in the world is it worth? I want $18,000. I don't think it's worth that much, but I have a friend who I really wanna show this to. I wanna get his opinion on what it's worth. Hang out a few minutes, I'm gonna get him down here. I want him to look at this, okay? Yep, perfect. Before negotiating on the $18,000 asking price, Rick brings an expert. Craig Gottlieb, the weapons expert, is also very impressed by the one-of-a-kind gun. It is so rare that Craig cannot dare to attach a dollar value to it. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready. It's actually loaded. Man, I'm just, this is crazy. How did this get here? Nobody's gonna ever know, right? No, no one's gonna know. There's just a million things with this. We have no idea what's going on. 
This is a Remington New Model Army. Uh, they made them roughly from 1862 to 1875. And in fact, if it wasn't for the Colt fire that destroyed the factory, this gun probably wouldn't have been produced in as great a quantity as it was. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the one time when you're going to ask me what it's worth that I'm going to tell you I don't know. There's nothing else like it. It's one of a kind. OK, so you're not buying a Remington here. You're buying the chance to talk about this gun. I'll tell you what I'd pay for it. I mean, that's all I can say. I'd tell you what I would pay for it. I'd pay three or $4,000, no problem. OK. I guess it's a starting point. Thanks, Mark. Rick, thanks. OK, I knew you would love to see oh, it. Oh, I love it. Thanks for calling me down. And man, you showed me something I've never seen before, so. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. OK, so this is one of those few things that I would buy off a customer that I would not put it in my showcase. I'd bring it home because I really want this for myself. I think this is the greatest thing in the world to pull out at a cocktail party with your friends and talk about it. I'd give you $4,000 for it. No, I'm going to pour myself an adult beverage and sit around and tell stories about it and listen to other people okay. still tell stories. It's one of the neatest oddities I've ever seen. Uh, if you change your mind, I, I don't know why it's so I know it's, we take five. No. Five grand cash for a gun that's basically ruined. No. OK. I mean, what would you take? 15. It's really cool to talk about for five grand, not for 15. Thanks for bringing it in. Really, this Thank is you. you really got a treasure there. Thank you. If you change your mind, bring it straight back to me, OK? Thank you. Rick offers Tom $5,000, but he refuses to part with a gun for less than 15,000. He begs Tom to come back if he ever changes his mind. 1969 Rokon Trailbreaker. Steve brings Rick a motorbike that Corey jokingly accuses of looking more like a tractor. Rick knows how handy the off-road bike is and is much more interested in it than Corey. Corey, Rick, get over here and look at this thing. It's some kind of motorcycle tractor thing. It's a Rokon Trailbreaker two-wheel drive off-road motorcycle. This thing looks like it should have a bucket loader in the front of it, dude. This thing is definitely cool. Where'd you get it? I actually got it right after I graduated from high school. I used to live in Barstow, California, so that's like, you know, heaven for bike riders. And had it for a couple of years. You know, I've off-roaded my whole life, and this is just cool. These were like high-tech when they came out. They weren't real fast, though. Maybe 15, 20 miles an hour tops downhill, but <laughs> I had a blast with it. What's up with the huge metal things on the tires, man? Three reasons. They won't fill up with mud when you're off-roading. You can also fill them full of gas. So you're just rolling around with gas in your wheels flying around. Yeah. You know, I've always really wanted one of these, but it's rough. It's not very good condition. It's obviously got a flat tire. Engine doesn't turn over. I am not a mechanic, but I'm sure it could be brought up to spec fairly simply. This thing is rough. But I think if I can get it for the right price, it's worth it. But man, I really want to ride this thing. So how much were you looking to sell this thing for? I thought if I could get 2000 I mean, that's kind of what I paid for it, but it's an antique now. So I thought maybe there was some value there. But uh, <laughs> don't laugh. Rick laughs at Steve's $2,000 asking price and offers him 500 for it because it will need serious restoration to become fit for use once more. Yeah, I mean... If this thing was in good shape, I might consider that, but this thing needs like one of everything. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 500 bucks for the thing, and that's just because I think it's really cool. I'm not gonna go one penny more. Well, okay, I don't wanna put it back in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, man. Cool. A few weeks ago, I dropped off the Rokon Trailbreaker with Rick Dale. He just called to see if I could meet him out in the desert. So Chum, Corey, and I are on our way to meet him. I'm not sure what he's got up his sleeve, but I hope it's cool. Sorry I'm late, guys. <laughs> I had to give a little trial spin. <laughs> So what do you think? I think it's great. I'll tell you what, man, I have my doubts about this, but it looks pretty good. So what happened? You know, I had to gut the thing and take everything off and rebuild everything on it. Everything on this bike was dented, bent, twisted thing, and you know, they're abused really hard. And getting everything in sync from the, the gearbox to the, to the rear wheel, it was a nightmare. <laughs> You'd think I'd be used to the crap that Rick brings in, but this Rokon was a nightmare. The parts? are obsolete. You can't find parts for the 69 at all. The brake system, not anything you could buy. So we had to make these discs uh, so we had brakes. Rick Dale did an amazing job, but he's making me a little nervous with everything he had to do. Okay, well, I bought it for 500, so what's the damage? All right, well, restoration cost is 2800. Okay, that's not that's not really bad. So what do you think we could sell it for? I think you should have no problem getting 5 grand out of it at all. Prove me wrong, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Rick.
So Tom, you wanna take it for a ride? Hell yeah. I don't think so. I'm taking it for a ride. Time and time again, Rick Dale delivers. It's getting to the point where he just sneeze on something and he makes me money. He never disappoints. Get it on, Rick, let's go. Rick Dale, the restoration expert, moans so much about the work needed to restore that bike that Rick dreads to hear the bill. Lucky for him, it only took $2,800 to make the bike worth about $5,000. Not that Rick would sell it to save his life. Airplane Spinners Corey and Chum check out some old airplane parts that Jacob hopes to sell. Corey and Chum speculate on the type of plane the spinners come from and wonder how valuable they could be. How you doing, man? So what do we got here? Got a couple of old airplane parts for you guys. I don't know. Looks like a conehead prop to me. I don't know, man. What's the deal with you putting stuff on your head? I like helmets. So it looks like these are airplane spinners that go over the propeller. Exactly. My buddies that found them told me they, they basically go on the front of the, the turbine, makes the plane more aerodynamic. Yeah, these look like they probably would have been like 1950s or 60s, a smaller passenger plane or like something like a business executive style plane because they're definitely not a commercial plane. They would be much, yeah, much way bigger. Too small. Yeah. What are you trying to get out of them? Uh, I was hoping to get 750 for the three of them. Uh, I mean, Luca's here. You want to go ask him? Yeah, I can go ask him. He might have an idea on what we could do with these. I'm going to go grab them. At their wit's ends, they decide to ask an expert. Luca informs them that the spinners are likely from a 1950s or 60s plane and can be used in an art installation project in multiple ways. Here's what I wanted you to take a look at right now. Hey, what's up, Corey? What's up, Luca? Good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. I think these are called spinners. I'll agree with you. Probably came from a 1950s or 60s. There's a lot of holes in here, so looks like somebody started a project and didn't finish it. So, Luca, what are you thinking we could do with these? I'm thinking maybe we can turn them into lights or sconces. So you think you can work with these? Most definitely. I'm getting a good idea here, Big Hoss. Instead of selling these, we always get in the good graces of your dad when we give him a gift. We could figure out an idea to like fit these in to the style of his bar up at his organ house. These would actually look pretty cool in there. So we can give him a gift and make him pay for it. And he will still love it. So what do you think is safe to pay for something like this? Honestly, guys, with the condition they're in, it looks like somebody started a project that they didn't finish. So I think with what we're going to have into it, I'd probably pay no more than $600 for these things. All right, well, what are you thinking? I mean, I wanted $750. He said somewhere around $600. That'd work for me. How about $300? I mean, $300 feels a little low. $600 feels a little high. What do you think, Big Hoss? And I don't think you have a place to sell them, so I think $400 bucks would be great. Yeah, I think I can make $400 work. All right, well, my cashier's over there. Luca, it sounds like you got a job, man. <laughs> I'm only going to be here a few days. Can you get it done in that time frame? Yeah, we got a time crunch here to work with, guys. Appreciate it. They'll get you paid up there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Luca, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Rick? Surprise! We got you a gift. What is this? For your Rick Cave up in Oregon, your bar thing that you're building up there. I know how bad you wanted a picture of Pinky in your Rick Cave, so there you go. Pretty cool. It is pretty incredible. Well, you know what's incredible? Is you should have saw the condition these things were in when Luca got them. Do you know what they are? Airplane spinners? Well, nothing gets by you, Rick. That is a amazing way to repurpose some airplane parts. The best part is, this is from them to you. Thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate it. You're and welcome. Thanks for helping me pack up. There was a lot of stuff, and I had to do it by myself. Well, guess what? Your day's almost over. Just pack these up, and you'll be fine. I just got one more thing to pack up, Pops. Have a good night. Did you bring boxes? Just for the light bulbs. Chum offers 300 When Jacob hesitates, Corey offers him $400, and a deal is struck. Luca transforms them into beautiful light sconces, and they happily present them to Rick. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like, and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.